Uh, it is a nice jacket. It is tempting. You think I should wear it? Oh, you think I should? Okay, I'll wear it for a little while. Because I do, do love it so. What? Okay, I heard something about make it sweaty. That can't be good. That can't be good. Novel you know what? I love Junpei. I love Junpei. He was really, really great. And every time there was a new persona, I was so excited to get the call from the company saying that it, you know that Junpei was back. You know, um, you know there is a there's a big difference between video games and anime. Um, when you're recording a video game, there's usually a lot more fighting. There's usually a lot more what they call in-game sounds, like the 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 the, the strength, you know, the strain and the, and the, the exertions, the yells, the fight, the punch, and it's not just recording one. Like the, you've got to record a small punch, medium punch, big punch, small kicked in the in the gut, medium kicked in the gut, big kicked in the gut, falling from five feet, falling from ten feet, falling from thirty feet. You know what I mean? Um, every conceivable variation and uh, and so there's a lot more of that in video games um, but I always love the actual like the cutscenes and the things that that develop the character more you know than just the fighting but Junpei I love me some Junpei he's great question yes when you audition and you get the sides obviously the physical parts of the character determine what type of voice you use how much does the background of the backstory what type of person is. Great question. Great question. Um, when you go into audition for an anime series, they'll give you a single piece of paper for each character. And what that paper will contain would be a picture of the character, his name, a brief description of the character, and then four or five lines that the character would say that are indicative of the character's personality. And when you audition, you kind of, you know, you you do your best with what you think the character would sound, excuse me, the character would sound like. But then also the director often has an idea in his mind of what he wants the character to be like. So I may do a character like, I may do a character like this, and I may do the audition like this. And then the director goes, okay, that was good, but take some of the growl out of it. So then I may do it like this, and take some of the growl out. And then he'll say, okay, maybe make it a little higher, it's a little low, and then I'll do it like this. So now the growl is gone, and the low is gone, but it's still the same uh, essence of the character. And then, of course, <clears throat> there's the original Japanese. Now, sometimes a director, uh, sometimes uh, a, a Japanese company will give an English company the, sh the show, the dub, and then they'll say, we want it to sound just like our guy. So it doesn't even matter if you do a great job. If you don't sound like their guy, then you're not going to get cast. So if it's a show like uh, Naruto or even Full Metal or uh, a big show, a big, big show, that the company, the Japanese creators, the company that created it, they care a lot about how that show is presented in English. Some shows they don't, right? Like for instance, uh, you know, if there's a show that didn't do very well, and the Japanese company just wants to make a little extra money from it, 
and you come along and you say, hey, can I buy the license to dub that into English? They're like, well, sure, here, have at it, right? I mean, do whatever you want. It, it didn't do well for us. It doesn't have much of a fan following. Do whatever you want. Cast whoever you want. Rewrite the script however you want. Do what you want. But when a show comes along like Full Metal or uh, One Punch or Naruto, big shows that have a big fan base, the Japanese company cares very much about what the actors sound like who play those characters. In fact, I was very lucky to get cast as Ed because I don't sound like Romy Park. In the original Japanese, Ed and Al were played by girls, right? But good fortune for me, the Japanese company actually wanted the English version of Ed to be more masculine. So I lucked out. Because when I first heard Romy, I was like, oh crap, I can't sound like that on my best day. But fortunately, they had a different idea in mind. But when they cast Full Metal, Funimation didn't even cast Full Metal Alchemist. All Funimation did was record the actors. And then they sent the auditions to Japan for the people who owned Full Metal Alchemist to make the choices. So some shows the studio will cast, and other shows the studio will just send the auditions to the, the Japanese owners to cast it. But there are several different factors in deciding how to play a role, uh, how to voice a character. Certainly background is part of it. Um, you know, if I, if I tell you this guy is a nerd, he works in the library, he doesn't really have many social skills, right? You're gonna get an idea in your mind of what that guy sounds like. Perhaps he's kind of monotone, perhaps he talks too quiet, he talks quiet you know, I mean, maybe he doesn't even talk very loud because he's a little bit, you know, not really good with social situations and, and talking to people. But maybe the director's got a different thing in mind. Maybe the director has decided that because he's awkward, maybe he talked a little louder. <laughs> right? That kind of, uh, dude, you don't really even know how loud you're talking right now. You know? Who knows? There are always these different variables. And I'll tell you one thing that's really difficult about auditioning is that you, you don't always know what they want. I've auditioned for a lot of things, and I'm like, there are five different ways I could go with this audition. How do I know what they want? And the worst part is, if you knew what they wanted, you could do it. But you just don't know what they want. You know what I mean? So it's really, it's tricky. And you know what? It's the same thing with demos. It's the same thing with making a voiceover demo. What do you put on a demo? You can't put a hundred voices on a demo because no producer's going to listen to a demo for 20 minutes. You know what I mean? And, and what, if you, what if you could do something, but you don't put it on the demo because you have to keep the demo a minute long? Now what do you do? What if you could do a really good accent, but you don't put it on the demo because it's, that's kind of a specific, a specific thing, right? You, you don't put it on there. And then somebody listens to your demo and they're looking for somebody with an accent that can do an accent. And just because it wasn't on your demo, they don't think you can do it. And your demo gets pushed aside. You know what I mean? It's really, it's really a gamble. You, you never know what, you know, it's, it's a real, uh, it's hard to know in these kind of situations. You do your best, you hope for the best, you know? I'll give you a perfect example. Oh my gosh, I just thought of the best example. We've been talking about Italians all morning, right? <laughs> I wanted to play Italy so bad, in Italian. I was like, Dad, come in, I'm Italian. I love Italy, I love pasta. I, you know, I, I write songs about Italy. And the Japanese actor who played Italy, in, in the original Japanese, he also played Phi in Subasa Chronicle, who I played. And I thought, I thought okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta get this. So I auditioned for Funimation, and the director told me, do it as high as you can. Like, do the voice as high as you can. So I pushed my voice as high as I could in my chest voice, 
you know the difference? You, you understand? Your chest voice is when you're talking from down here. But there's another voice called falsetto. Which is like this, it goes even higher. <laughs> right? It didn't occur to me to do the falsetto. It didn't even occur to me. I just tried to do it in my chest voice as high as I could. Well, my buddy Todd, when he went into audition, and the director said, do it as high as you can, he went up into his chest voice, so this is your goose. And he got cast. Now, he does a great job. I'm not taking anything away from him, but do you see my point? My point is, you might have been able to do something had you known or had it occurred to you, but you may lose an opportunity just because you didn't think of it, or you didn't include it, or whatever. So, you never really know how auditions are gonna go, and what the director's thinking, what the Japanese creators may be thinking, if they're able to weigh in on it, uh, what the original actor sounds like, how does that weigh in on it. I'll tell you something else about voice acting and demos. Don't ever put a voice on a demo that you're not prepared to do for 12 hours. You may be able to make your voice do some pretty creepy things, right, for one line. But if you put that on a demo and somebody goes, oh my gosh, this is the greatest, creepiest voice. We're casting this person to play this character in this anime series that has 200 episodes. You're screwed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because your voice will be so, you know what I'm saying? You can't. There are some things that you can do with your voice, and you guys know what I'm talking about, but you can't maintain it. It's not something you want to do for very long, right? Like, a, like, like maybe a golem voice or something, you know. Something that's very scratchy. Yeah, that's really great. That's very demonic and it sounds cool. And you'll be dead in about nine minutes. You know what I mean? So you always be careful if you're ever gonna make a demo or you're ever gonna audition for something, be careful that you don't do something that you can't do for very long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Question, yes. If I could get any tattoo symbol from Full Metal, what would I get? Ooh. You know, I would probably have to get that one. I mean, I couldn't get the Ouroboros, like the snake eating its tail. I'm not a homunculi. I can't get the blood seal. I'm not out. I'd have to get the flamel, right? I'm getting warm. Thank you for letting me borrow that one. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to do the flamel. Question? Uh, yes, sir. everybody to hear the question. So I've seen multiple voice actors really get into the characters. Like the one I think of the most is Mark Hamill as the Joker. He seemed like distort his uh, features. Like what do you do to help you get into the character? Uh, it depends on the character. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. It's, I know it's kind of lame, but it's my life. <laughs> there was a